I'm Minnie Rowe. In May of 2015, we reported on the crusade of 53 elderly South Korean women, former comfort women or sex slaves of the Japanese military during World War II. These women have been demanding an apology from the Japanese government for decades for these war crimes. At the end of 2015, the Japanese did finally issue an apology from Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, along with a compensation package of $8.3 million for the victims. But this announcement has sparked even more controversy and resentment. <laughs> The fury in this woman is evidence of 70 years of pent-up anger and frustration. <laughs> Lee yong Su, a former comfort woman, lashes out at the South Korean vice foreign minister as he attempts to explain the terms of the settlement. <laughs> To fully understand her pain, we need to go back to the early 1940s when she says she and other teenage girls in Japanese-occupied Korea were being snatched off the side of the road by the Japanese military. I kicked my feet and said, I'm not going. Even though it's been over 70 years, Lee yok sun still remembers that day vividly the day her life changed forever. One took my hands, the other my feet, and threw me up. I was thrown up high, and I fell hard. It was 1942, and Lee was just 15 years old when she says she was kidnapped and taken to a so-called comfort station or brothel and forced to have sex with Japanese soldiers multiple times a day. In one day, we have to serve 40, 50 soldiers. Think about it. How many hours are in a day? How would we take care of 40, 50 people? It would have been better to die. Via Skype, I spoke to Lee from her residence, Nanumejib, or House of Sharing, which is also a museum and memorial to former comfort women. Despite her advanced age, she recalls with great clarity the horrors she witnessed so many years ago. Those girls refused to entertain the soldiers and wouldn't listen. They would line them up and slash them open with a knife. What else but blood would come out? I don't call it a comfort station. It was a slaughterhouse where they murdered people. <laughs> Historians estimate that there were about 2,000 comfort stations across Asia and up to 200,000 comfort women during World War II, the bulk of them Chinese and Korean. But there were also Burmese, Indonesian, Filipino, even Dutch and Australians. Documents and testimony by former soldiers suggests that the Japanese military was involved in this large-scale sex slavery, perversely as a way to prevent rape crimes and venereal disease during their troops' deployment. Japan has continued to deny any coercion, saying the women voluntarily entered into prostitution due to poverty. Then, just before the new year of 2016, the global media exploded with news of a landmark breakthrough. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe expresses his sincere apologies, offers an $8.3 million compensation package to the victims. And the Japanese and Korean governments agree to put this issue to rest once and for all. After more than 20 years of weekly protests by the women in front of the Japanese embassy in Korea, it appeared this painful chapter in these women's lives could finally come to a close. Instead, it had the opposite effect. <laughs> Uh, 
Aynı sen ayo. Kırım böyle bir iyi geliyor de kendine ayo. Ne gibi? Yoksa sen gibi niye kes her ayının diye? The biggest problem is that the victims were excluded from uh, the negotiation process. Phyllis Kim is the executive director of the Korean American Forum of California, an advocate group for the comfort women. This was a uh, crime against humanity, and this was viewed as a women's rights issue uh, because it was related to the sexual violence against women during military conflict. As the victim uh, has the right uh, to uh, be included in any kind of negotiation that will resolve this issue. Kim says the women have been unwavering in their demands for the past two decades. They want a formal acknowledgement that the Japanese government was responsible, an apology, legal reparations, a full investigation followed by punishment, and finally education and memorials built to remind the next generation of the atrocities that had occurred. None of these demands were met. Even though there was an apology from the Prime Minister uh, Abe, uh, it did not come from uh, directly uh, from uh, himself as the uh, Prime Minister of Japan. And the, the content of the apology is very vague. Uh, it did not explicitly acknowledge the state responsibility of uh, Japanese government. In addition, Kim says we should not forget that comfort women are not just Koreans, but victims from many other nations who were excluded from this accord. We should consider the uh, accord that was just struck by uh, the both government null and void and start a renegotiation uh, with a Japanese government on one side and all the victims from uh, 11 different countries on the other side, represented by the advocate groups and the professional negotiator, um, so that their demands and uh, demands are reflected in the negotiation process. Every Wednesday for the past 24 years, the women have been protesting in front of the Japanese embassy in Seoul. On the Wednesday following the news that Prime Minister Abe had apologized, it was the largest one to date, with a thousand people in Seoul showing up and timed protests taking place in 12 nations and 45 locations across the globe, including Kim and her group in Glendale, California, New York, San Francisco, Tokyo, Toronto, London, Paris, and Munich. These women say they will not rest until their dignity has been restored, if not for themselves, then for the memory of those who went before them. As part of the accord, the Japanese also requested the removal of the bronze girl statue in front of its embassy in Seoul, a request that the women refused to acknowledge. I'm Minnie Rowe for Asian American Life.